No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history, and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land. A land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico, Mexico feels like home. In the southeast corner of our state, between Roswell and Carlsbad on US 285 South, sits the town of Artesia. While visitors will note its charming main street of storefronts and eateries dotted with historic sculptures, the heart of this city is its people. And in my experience, the town's young people made the trip one of the best I've had. Let me back up a bit. A few months back, we received a packet of letters from seventh grade history students from our teacher intermediate school and their teacher, Miss Elena Gidry, imploring us to come to their town and see the sights. They wrote to us of the history, the food, the football, all the things they love about their hometown and wanted me to come experience it for myself. How could I resist? So here I am. This morning, Donald's meeting me at my hotel so we can go geocaching, something I've been curious to try. All right, so we got on here, we have a couple of them. The closest one, yeah, there's like the trail boss, maybe you want to do trail that boss. one? Yeah, we could try the trail boss. Donald pulls up the list of nearby cache locations. Yeah. How to get there. OK, that's yeah. cool. Can so we... it's easy. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than this. <laughs> no, it's actually really easy. <laughs> OK, so we're going that direction? Yep, we got to go that way. So for anyone not familiar with geocaching, it utilizes GPS to send you on a sort of treasure hunt and can be a great way of taking the road less traveled. OK. okay. So the hint says two by three magnetic box, so it could pretty much be anywhere metal. All right, okay. So, like, so all right, you want to split up? You go that way, I go this way? Sounds good. Okay. So I don't know how helpful the hint is at this point, since the whole sculpture is metal, but who said it was going to be easy? At least we're taking in the sights while we're on the hunt, like this piece of work here. The trail boss is one of the three sculptures here in town, which together weave a narrative of an attempted theft of a steer on a cattle drive. Down the road, you'll spot the vaquero, who alerts the trail boss to the thief, and finally, the rustler himself. These sculptures are dotted along Main Street and provide an insight to the town's history and the people behind it. But I digress. Back to the task at hand, which is finding the small magnetic box. I swear we have looked everywhere at this point, unless it's right underfoot. Good look on here, right? Yeah. Uh, I see something. You see? Sure? You see something? I see something. What you got? Ah! Found it. Ah, it was hidden deep in there, man. Yeah, for real. Okay. What we got? What we got? We have a pencil sharpener and a button. Some ex expensive stuff in there. For real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> True treasure. Clearly, the geocache experience is not about the treasures inside the box, but about the joy of the hunt. We can sign. Oh, that's cool. So you can see all the people that were here before. Yeah, like. Congratulations! You found it. Intentionally or not, that's awesome. All right, so we got our first one down. Let's Where is our next geocache? So insane. looking at here, the closest one. Can a park have cable? Okay. Can we do that one? Yeah, let's do that one. Let's try it. Okay, and go. I think Donald and I make a good team, and your odds are certainly better when scavenging with a compadre than solo. All right, so what does the hint say? Let's see, the hint says pipe. Pipe. I have to say, even when you're not at the most exciting of locales, the intrigue factor that comes into play when you're searching for a cache inspires a unique experience and appeals to the adventuresome spirit in any traveler. Not to mention, you can certainly end up visiting places you otherwise would not. I think I found it. Yeah. Thanks for that clue, that was good. We're on a roll. We decide to take a stab at the third location on the list, which takes us to the edges of town, where orchards of pecan trees line the road. Yes, geocaching also allows for you to take the scenic back roads. I could get into this. The hint says concrete. Concrete confined space. <laughs> Let's make sure there's no snakes. <laughs> well, we got some worms. This is really like a, a hidden treasure that we're digging for. Yeah, and the last one, the people that found it, they were barely four, it was barely four days ago, so. Really? I don't know if they left anything. Oh, look at this. Ah. Oh, look at this. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, what do you know? What the heck? <laughs> Man, that was a that was an, uh, a distraction. That was. Uh huh. Look at what we got here. This is Mission accomplished. Well, this is truly an instance where you got to think outside the box. Really? Literally. Yes. <laughs> yes. And now from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. On Artesia's Main Street is a gateway to the town's history, and a visual synopsis of the entire state's backstory. All right. So where are we? The Heritage Walkway. Wow. Oh, all roads lead to this path. Upon entry to the Heritage Walkway, imagery of Spanish conquistadors appear alongside Native American scenes, leading into settlers moving west on covered wagon, where the prospect of homesteading, working on the railroad, or discovering oil brought people to towns like Artesia. Artesia is named after the Artesian Wells underground. Right. Uh -huh. So kind of the springing of life from underground is our water. Just as sure as the water flowed, the oil burst from the ground, a history encapsulated beyond these walls in the Derrick Floor sculpture on Main Street. Dedicated to the people who worked this oil patch, and just one instance where a celebratory portrait of the men and women of Artesia is cast in bronze. So I want to take you across the street to one of our mini statues here in town. Okay. She is called the First Lady of Artesia, Sally Chisholm. The famous Sally the Chisholm. The famous Sally Chisholm. She was an entrepreneur. She was one of the first ladies to come in the town and establish herself as something. She opened a post office. She was queen of the Jingle Bob Ranch. Like, she is someone to be in awe of. Okay. Interestingly enough, there seems to be a book in our hand that says mm -hmm. Billy the Kid. Now, the little knowledge I know about Sally Chisholm <laughs> Is there some kind of connection with Billy yes, the Kid? Yes, possibly a romantic connection <laughs> oh, with Billy the Kid. Speculation, that's speculation. Spe yes, speculation, <laughs> but that's what history is. Okay. Can't argue with Miss G on that one. We head to the library, where we move from speculation to fiction, as depicted in the giant classic novels and avid readers atop them. But beyond the art outside is a treasure within the walls of the library. Above the rows of books is a masterpiece by one of the region's most acclaimed artists, Peter Hurd. Born in Roswell, Hurd used the landscapes and ranch life of the Southwest as inspiration for much of his work, as we see in the fresco before us. If you travel towards Cloudcroft, mm -hmm. there's lots of abandoned ranch houses like this. So tell me some of the details of, of the, the mural here. It's depicting harvest time. Mm. And especially in this part of the country, you have to prepare for winter and be able to survive and feed your family right. and your livestock right. up until the next spring. What speaks to you, Brexit? Well, the title is The Future Belongs to Those Who Prepare For It, so basically just preparing for what comes to them. As a metaphor and literally canning and putting all your veggies in some kind of preserve, but also talking about we're in a library. Mm -hmm. right. The future belongs to those who prepare, and yes. this is kind of that extended metaphor for that. So my other question is, how did this thing get inside of this building? Because <laughs> I know it's not from here, it wasn't made here, right? No. Yeah, and it, uh, it was a big deal. I mean, you had people who came out and picnic to watch <laughs> them hauling it in here through the roof with a crane, with wow. a giant crane. 65,000 pounds. 65,000 pounds. The logistics involved with moving this gigantic fresco from Houston to Artesia is a show all its own. But let's just say, it is a marvel and a sight to behold. Truly something to see in person. A great time to come see the mural is at night and from across the street of the library. To get fully immersed in the world of the artist, take an excursion to the Heard Family Ranch in San Patricio just over an hour away and visit the Heard La Rinconada Gallery. For more great stories like this from New Mexico Magazine, visit newmexico.org. Today I met up with Maddie to talk about her letter and the places she thinks I need to prioritize during my visit to Artesia. One of the things I did write about in the my note was mm -hmm. there is an underground school here, the first yeah. one, Abo. That sounds kind of intriguing and scary at the same yeah. time. <laughs> my dad is assistant superintendent. Maybe he can give y'all a private tour of oh, Abo. That would be nice. Yeah. The story behind the subterranean structure of Abo and its dual role as a school and fallout shelter goes back to the days of the Cold War. With its own oil refinery and proximity to White Sands Missile Range and the former Walker Air Force Base, Artesia was considered vulnerable to Soviet attack. And while not generally open to the public, Abo's fascinating history demanded I take Maddie and her dad up on the offer. All right, Danny, so we're here at Abo School, which I know has a lot of history. So can you give me maybe um, some of the background of the fallout shelter, the role it played here in Artesia? It was an elementary school 
but it was built uh, with some federal funds back in 1962 to also double as a fallout shelter. And so it was made to house several hundred people in the event that the, an atomic bomb was dropped. So not the only the elementary school kids, but also the town of Artesia, this yes. would be the place where they would go. Yes, yes. <laughs> And of course, uh, it was 1962 is when it opened. Uh, in October of 1962 was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm. It was just a hot topic, yeah. a hot issue at that time. And there were people for the dedication here from all over the world. And in fact, President Kennedy uh, was supposed to come. And in the office here at Albo Elementary School was a telegram with uh, President Kennedy's regrets for not being able to come to wow. the dedication of the school. I have this image in my mind of what it looks like, but I, I want to actually go down there and take a look. Can we do that? You you bet, we certainly can. Let's do it. As we make our way for the doors to the school, I imagine the different scenarios bringing people to this entrance. The end of recess, or what would feel like the end of days. This is the main entrance, uh, and then after everyone is inside, there's this giant steel door yeah. that would be closed um, behind everyone. Can't miss that. Yeah, and it is heavy too, so we'll, we'll get it going. Man, just listen to that. That's straight steel, huh? And then the door would be shut, and you could latch it there. There is another small door just outside this door mm -hmm. that someone could come in, and they would they would then go through this decontamination shower. I can't believe this is a, an actual thing that people prepared for. That's amazing. Still processing the decontamination showers, we head downstairs to take in some of the other unique elements of the school in the mechanical room. You don't think about the, the special needs of an underground school, um, and especially when you're coupling it with the needs of a fallout shelter. Mm -hmm. There are two modes of a building, a normal mode mm -hmm. and then a, a, a survival mode. Talk about extremities. Yes. <laughs> normal <laughs> and extreme. <laughs> that's that's the way it is. Uh, right, so this is everything you would need essentially to run a, a small city, a small right. town yes. for an extended amount of time. Yes, that's, huh. that's exactly right. The reality of Abo's emergency role is becoming more vivid. This is the cafeteria and it also would double as the recreation room uh, if there were to be a, a fallout incident. And the civil defense plan, uh, in case of a fallout, there were lots of activities that, that were used around the clock. Uh, everyone was on a different schedule. You may eat breakfast at 9 p.m. and your day start at 9 p.m. and you'd have uh, a recreation time. It's not like your Carcadian rhythm is <laughs> in, in rhythm with the sun because you're not seeing it. So 8 o'clock is arbitrary at that, that point. That's exactly right. Thankfully, Abu never served as a nuclear fallout shelter, but remained open as a school until 1995 and today is used for federal law enforcement training. Walking through the empty hallways of Abo and hearing the stories of the school's morgue and the schematics for arranging hundreds of cots within these classrooms connects me to a chapter of history I may not have otherwise imagined. Coming up, we find where to get the best bites in town. Do you need a reason to hit the road? Find out about upcoming events around the state at NewMexico.org. Right on Main Street in Artesia is the Wellhead Brewery. Housed in the historic Baskin Building, this restaurant and brew house has quickly become an institution of downtown Artesia. Paying homage to the oil fields that helped develop and still drive the economy of this town, the Wellhead is a favorite among locals, including my new friend Caleb, who I will be dining with tonight. It started in 1905 okay. with the uh, hotel here, oh. and there was a restaurant as well. There's actually some photos here about all the hotels and the furniture, the auto part. The many lives this building has lived. It has really great food and really great service, and they have the brew pub here as right. well. Which you shouldn't really know about yet because you're, what, 13? Yes, sir. <laughs> but so in terms of food, what, uh, what are the things that you like to, to get when you're here? I like to get the tilapia piccata. Oh. You have a sophisticated palate, my friend. Yes, sir. This tilapia piccata. I don't think I was eating tilapia piccata when I was 13. Caleb, you might be teaching me something here today. You know, whether, whether it comes to food and history, you, you seem like you know your stuff. Yes, sir. <laughs> Beyond Caleb's expansive palate, I'm also impressed that a town the size of Artesia has a brewery like this. In a few years, Caleb and I will be back to pair our meal with some of the fine craft beers on tap. But until then, 
right? This food looks incredible. Bon appetit, my friend. Caleb and I waste no time digging in. Who needs Yelp when you have a source like him? Cheers to the wellhead. Now, on the other end of town and across the tracks is La Era Dura. While lesser known, this quintessential mom and pop joint is just as beloved. And Bianca's probably their biggest fan. But this is like traditional good Mexican food, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And all of it's actually homemade. Wow. And all the people that work here that cook in the kitchen are family mm -hmm. of the owner here. Yeah, so it's like you're entering their family table. It's like mm -hmm. a family kitchen kind of thing. And so your family comes here a lot? Yeah, a lot on Sundays. On Sundays. Oh, it's like a big family gathering. Everybody comes together mm -hmm. and eats together. Good. On Sunday, there's mostly people here during lunch. Like, mm -hmm. it's always packed. Yeah, if it's off the bean path and it's packed, you know the food's good. Bianca admits she comes here multiple times a week, really so I know I'm in for something good. Gracias. This is so colorful and fresh. There's cilantro on there. Man, you are lying. This is probably some of the best Mexican food I've had. That's not for camera. This truly is amazing Mexican food. You know where to find me if I'm not at the wellhead. The Adobe Roast Restaurant in Artesia is a favorite among locals, and with an enchanting outdoor patio and tantalizing menu, it's no secret why. Housed in a beautiful preserved adobe building, the ambiance is on par with the cuisine, which is why Riley and her parents have brought me here today. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm hungry. So um, Absolutely. this is my first time. I'm excited to be here with y'all. Artesia has many very good restaurants, and but I think the atmosphere is what something that sets this place apart. And, and you have the fountain out there. It seems like you know, is that what people do on the weekends or oh, when they it's use nice out? The outside patio a lot. The owners are from here. They they live here. Their kids go to school here. It's right. locally owned, which is which is always nice. I know as a, as a traveler because I get to travel all around the state. It's always nice to come to a town and then just feel welcome, you know? And it kind of feels like that, that southern hospitality that you, you feel when you're in, in the south, but you have, you're in the middle of southeastern Mexico, you know? This is like... People talk about they leave Artesia and they'll come back. And it's, they do, they come back. And sometimes that's seen as a negative, like, oh, you can't get away from your hometown. Right, right. But it's because there's no place like it. There's right. no place... Like home. Like home. You come down Main Street and you see there, this is a bustling and busy town that wants people to come in and, and, and experience right. what Artesia is all about. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Before our meal makes its way to the table, I duck in back to get a few words with the chef, Chloe. So Chloe, what would you say is the inspiration behind the, the food that you guys are pumping out? Honestly, it's just, this is a family town and we're so family driven. Yeah. Um, and my whole family is behind me in this and so I'm, I'm feeding them. You know, I'm trying to take some more elevated cuisine and bring it up here yeah. to Artesia using some of the New Mexico flavors. One of my inspiration chefs is from New Orleans. Wow. And so I'm, I'm pulling from all kinds of different experiences. And so that's kind of what created my cuisine. Right, it's eclectic, mm -hmm. but, yeah. but grounded. Yeah, yeah, it's what I like to cook, it's what I like to eat, so. From the looks of things, it's what I'm going to like to eat too. Chloe has hit the sweet spot in creating fair, satisfying the comforts of traditional down-home cuisine while bringing out the freshness and unique flavors of our state. So how's everything? Oh, it's delicious, delicious. Very good. Great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Quite a place you have here. Thank you. And including all this old adobe, so I know there has to be some kind of backstory. Oh, there's a lot of story here. Yeah. This used to be the, well, across the street where Fletzi is was a college of Artesia, mm -hmm. and um, they didn't have a place for the art students, and so the art students came over here, they had this property, and they built this building, this room here, out of adobe from from the yard right out here and they started running out of funding and I'm sure you've heard of Peter Hurd the artist yeah mm -hmm. he funded he helped fund them and then it eventually became the Peter Hurd art studio this in this place the Peter this Hurd? place here oh that's uh, uh, when we bought it it was a bed and breakfast we really wanted to showcase New Mexico and Artesia all our food everything is New Mexico mm -hmm. uh, we spent a year before we opened the restaurant to go around the state to source all our foods and even our beers and wines, we try to keep mostly uh, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So, so when, when our tagline says, flavors of the spirit of New Mexico, mm -hmm. it truly is. This is a really local place. Yes, <laughs> Everything is absolutely. extremely local. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm gonna dig into this because you've you got me already hungry talking about all this food. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Thanks, all right, I'll you. Thank, you. thank you for coming. The combination of the delicious food and relaxing atmosphere makes the adobe rose a must when in Artesia.
A contemporary modular structure sits next to a historic cobblestone home on West Richardson Avenue, and together, they are the Artesia Historical Museum and Art Center. As a history buff, my friend Kaylin has spent many an afternoon here, and he's agreed to show me around. This is a beautiful space you got here. Yeah, Kaylin's a good guy, and he kind of grew up in here. So you're gonna teach me something about Artesia yeah, today? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> okay. And right here, this is um. Well, Artesia is named after all the Artesian wells. Uh, so there, it, yeah. at one point, it was gushing that high. Yes. Oh man, that's that's crazy. So over here, we have a whole bunch of Native American culture, like arrowheads, and oh. a picture of Geronimo right here as well. Oh. So just fantastic to see what everything was back then. And Get a glimpse like, into the the world back then, huh? Yes. And arrowheads back over here. Oh, cool. Is that of interest to you? Are you do that? That, as that well? does interest me to see how mm -hmm. uh, different. Tribes made different types and different colors and everything. Right. And then the kitchen, wow, this yes. is really a blast in the past, uh, huh? All old cookware and um, like pans and silverware. They used to churn the everything. butter yes. hardcore. Uh -huh. Do you remember that time when they had to churn butter by hand? I bet I could figure it out. <laughs> I'm a history fanatic, so I know lots about um, old cookware and everything like that too. Okay. Yeah. So you actually history. have a genuine interest in it? Yes, I do. Okay. I really do. Uh, why, why is that? I just have a genuine fascination in what life was like Back then. decades ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How different it is yes, now. Yes, how different it is now. <laughs> Definitely. Small town museums like this present a more intimate experience. We are literally inside an old house and looking at images and artifacts from people who once walked these streets and called this place their home. The items you find here represent a community with a genuine affection for their town's history, a curiosity about what life was like for their forefathers, and a commitment to honor and preserve that way of life. And here's the Abo School, which was an elementary school and also a fallout shelter because it was during the Cold War and the okay. Cuban Missile Crisis. But there are plenty of old school photos dating back much farther than that. As my visit to Artesia was inspired by a bunch of middle school students, these struck a special chord. This is more um, agriculture than anything in this room. Oh, okay. Like yeah, this a, huge steer. <laughs> yeah, this steer right there. For Kalen, the relics in this room speak to his personal family history. Yeah. Like over there with the lamb shears, the lamb and now it's all like just regular electronic razors. Right. Having garnered awards for his reserve grand sheep, Kalen is more than familiar with the evolution of shearing tools. Just in this brief visit to the museum, I feel like I have better insight to the kids I'm meeting here by seeing into the lives of those that came before them in their hometown. So but, like the evolution of, of mm -hmm. the town is kind of depicted in this one little house. That's exactly right, yes. <laughs> but there's more outside the house. Old farming equipment and tractors are in view on the back lawn, with another surprise waiting in the garage. Even though I think I may have had the VIP treatment in seeing it because I was Kaylin's guest. Pretty cool. When you come, make sure to pop into the Art Annex Gallery next door the exhibits rotate and feature local art or traveling shows. Need a second dose of art? See what's playing at the Ocotillo Performing Arts Center on Main Street. From head to toe, we show you how to cowboy up in Artesia. Do you take a lot of pictures on your New Mexico travels? Well, if you do, show us by hashtagging New Mexico True on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Right on Artesia's Main Street is Benny's Western Wear, an outfitter whose selection of hats and boots, and then some, ensures that even an urban knight like myself can walk out looking like a cowboy. And that's exactly why my pal Zane has brought me here today. Oh, well, you got such dark pants, you're gonna need like maybe a brighter shirt. To... Brighter shirt, yeah. yeah. Pick him out something with right. some color, Zane. Yeah. Maybe like something like that. That's, that's, a, that's a hot fuchsia you got yeah. going on right now. I, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't mind it. That might look good. This, this, might, be, this might be a good color though. Yeah. Yeah. I think Zane's trying to help me broaden my fashion sensibilities. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah you got really some, nice. some color in there. Yeah. yeah. It's a cinch, mm -hmm. so that'll right. be a really nice shirt for you. Nice cut. Right. Yeah. You, know, you like that one? Yeah, I like it. And you know, you gotta tuck him in to be a cowboy. You gotta, you gotta oh, tuck yeah. him in. That's, that's, gotta, a, that's the number one rule. <laughs> <laughs> now time to move on to the denim, which I'm sure will have its own surprises. But when it came to my choice in belt, I even surprised myself. We got, well, we got a lot of Ooh. bling with Ooh. some hair on there. I mean, it's a bold statement, but you know, sometimes you gotta be bold, yeah. Zane. You know, okay. yeah. I'm being bold today. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> and now for the moment of truth. You look good. Yeah, you wouldn't like too bad yourself, oh, huh? Thanks. That color pops on you, man. I know. All right, well. I think um, you got an eye for, for color, Zane. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I mean, your fashion style is impeccable, I, I must say. 
<laughs> I get that a lot. You get that a lot, I yeah. bet, I bet. Yeah. Okay, I think the only thing we're missing are some a nice pair of boots okay. and a hat. All right. And the, the look is completed. Being the serious shopper, Zane heads to the back, but I think I'll leave this one to our man, Ooh. Clay. Brush out the box. Okay. Here we go. Not bad. That looks good. Yeah. All right. Now for the boots. So, so you, you want like a square toe or round toe? I'm thinking rounded toe. Getting these things on will be my workout for the day. Oh. Whew. You like it? It's official. Yeah, it's good. Are you ready for the night in the town? I think so. Hey, they kind of got two boys fixed up. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Jimmy. We'll make, we'll you make got a cowboy out of you, yes, aren't we? Yes, sir. You got some, some delta out here. You, yeah. you hooked us up real nice. Thank you, sir. You bet. You bet. No, yeah. looking good. Uh, how long have y'all been here and doing this? Well, you know, the store, my dad started in 1947. So, wow, a long time. Yeah, a lot longer than either one of y'all been around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to do some work. I heard some, some cattle. I might, I might have to quit my day job. <laughs> <laughs> Got some bulls in the pen out there that uh -oh. we need to brand. Uh -oh. uh, that's that's too much work for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I stop. <laughs> Almost a cowboy. Close enough for today. Head next door to Sagebrush Annie's Antiques for shopping of another variety. And when you've worn yourself out from shopping, grab a treat at the dessert studio across the street. I highly recommend their pecan pie. Right on Main Street in Artesia is a historic building housing Sagebrush Annie's Antique Store. Hi, Brianna. Hi, Luann. Good to see you. Michael, this is Luann. Nice to meet you. Hi, Michael. Nice to meet you, thank too. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, thank you for coming. Yes, it looks like you got a treasure trove of things in this building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have lots of stuff. I think some of your travelers, especially like from back east and yeah. up north, they really like, um, you know, the country room right. where the the deer heads and, the, <laughs> you know, the western stuff and everything is because mm -hmm. they're not used to that, you know. and. Uh, some people mistake the, the cow hides as, you know, something exotic or something <laughs> <Right>. else. <So. laughs> it is kind of fun to get to educate people on different things. Looking from outside, it seems like this building has been here a long time. So can you give me some of the history? Yeah, this building was built early 1900s, about wow. 1903 mm -hmm. or 5 or something like that. Uh, they called it the Joyce Pruitt Building. Mm -hmm. uh, it began as a mercantile and it had um, a bar a restaurant in it at one time. Wow. Uh, later, they made an upstairs up here, which became um, a motel. Okay. And you've been here before, so you're gonna yes. have to guide me to all the all the antiques that stick out to you. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Brianna spends a good deal of time here, pitching in and helping Luann out, so she's more than familiar with the great finds within Sorry, these rooms. Babe. Any interesting pieces in here that well, you love? Actually, this old hat box. We got this in a storage unit like a few years ago. Huh. It's like an old cowboy hat. Yes. How this hat made it from Fifth Avenue in New York to Artesia, I'm sure I'll never know. I love antique shops like this when we come into small towns because they're the perfect place to grab a memento or uh, an item that reminds you of that place, you know? Or a souvenir. Or like a souvenir or something. We make our way into the most heralded room here, the Western Room where a wall of deer and elk trophies greet you and relics of pioneer days line the shelves. So Brianna, how do you know all this stuff? Well, because I come in here almost every other weekend okay. to come help Luan out and I practically learned the history of our teacher in yeah. this place. Well, that's legit. It's a nice felt hat. But see, that's in now. That's the hip thing. They're like That's a, a hipster hat. <laughs> I, I don't think so, but... <laughs> Brianna's not taken by my hat selection so we move on to pursue some of the other rooms and their treasures. Now this is one of the most interesting rooms in the house. Okay, and why is that? Well, because we have this old sign that used to stand in front of an old country market. Uh, this exact sign? Yes. When ham and eggs used to be a dollar. <laughs> that Price just tells has you. gone up. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to hang out with a young person who takes such interest in items so far removed from the digital age she grew up in. And it's always good to have a friend to go antiquing. I'm wrapping up my week at Artesia Lanes. That's right, bowling. When you need a good dose of classic Americana, fun for all ages, night on the town with a gaggle of middle schoolers kind of nights. Thank you. Uh, these look like the lucky ones. <laughs> I hope I'm ready for this. I mean, look at them. These kids are going to town. And Miss G is in full swing too. Okay, so where are you, Zane? 
Bianca, Braxton, Riley. What about Caleb? Is Donald in the house? I've got to find my teammates and get a few warm-ups in if I'm going to try and compete with the crankers, tweeners, and strokers of this lot. Look at this guy with Miss G's crew over here, bowling strikes right and left. Okay, gotta knock you out. Here goes nothing. That might be it. Boom! Yeah! Woo! Not bad. All I right. think we can get this party started. Mr. DJ, I was just finding my rhythm, but I guess it's time for a different groove. Don't ask, just bust a move and do what the kids are doing. Who knew the bowling alley was also the site of the town's biggest dance party? All I know is, I had an awesome time in Artesia this week. Best people you'll ever meet, and tons of surprises. So what are you doing next weekend?